Hi, it's Rebecca from Rebecca Sewing Corner. And today I want to again talk to you about binders. Um, and actually, before I start playing around with my binder, um, I'm going to give you a preview on uh, something that I've already sewn um, of the look that I want to achieve today. And so I went up into my closet and grabbed this. And actually, it's looking a bit, a little, a little bit worn for the wear because it's, um, it's actually something I like to wear a lot, and um, it's kind of fading on a couple of, of spots. But um, the, the the look that I want to show you today, in and how to achieve this is actually the, using your double fold binder in its original intended double fold uh, setup, but with a single needle, so just with a chain stitch, uh, and I like the way this looks. Um, I think uh, you know some things that I've made just really just want to have you know a single line of stitching, not the double needle, not the double needle narrow, not the double needle wide, but just a, a, a single line. And um, so you know, depending on your project, you might want to do that. So this is the front side. This is the right side, uh, and and the back side is just the the chain stitch. Now some people say that their chain stitch doesn't have a lot of stretch. Um, mine does. So if you see that, I mean, my, my, my garment stretches and, um, but because of that, I would, you know, I would recommend, um, if you're sewing something to make sure that you do have a neckline, uh, that's not going to be challenged just in case you don't have enough stretch in your stitches. So, um, you know, something that has a slightly lower scoop, um, and, and you, you're sure you can get your head through safely. Okay. So this is the project, um, that I'd already done. I've already completed it and the uh, the results of it and I will move over and uh, and show you the steps to take on how to achieve this move that over and grab a binder okay so this is uh, this is my standard binder this is the binder that I love very much and use for almost everything it's the 36 to 10 millimeter double fold binder and the the strips that I need for it uh, in the double fold setup are 36 millimeters now right now it's adjusted properly and very nicely uh, to do a double fold with two needles and you see that the lower bumper is offset um, to the right of my upper bumper my upper bumper is out on the on the far edge now to be brutally honest we need to change that um, and uh, so that the folds of my binding are actually going to end up being pretty much on top of each other because I really need to make sure that when I'm putting this on my machine, um, that the, the lower fold is going to be caught by the needle, um, the single needle that we have, and, uh, and not wander off. Now, the adjustments that we need to make are actually pretty simple, um, but we do need to keep in mind that the strip of binding that we're going to be putting in, the strip of fabric that we're going to be putting in, is going to stay at the 36 millimeters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my lower bumper over to the left uh, a little bit and my upper bumper into the right so that they're um, they're pretty much above each other and, um, and through compensating the movements of left and right, um, I, you know, I'm still using up the same width of the fabric. So the first, first one I'm going to do is the upper one. So I'm just going to slightly loosen the screw. And I've, I've mentioned this in the um, longer tutorial about setting up your binder that these screws, at least on mine, move relatively easy. Um, so I'm already done, actually, with that. And if you can have a look now, you'll and you go over with your, with your finger, you'll notice that the, um, the upper bumper is now to... The right of the edge of this arm, which it which it usually rests on. So I'll give you that in a in a shot there. So now it's the question of the lower bumper, which I want to move to the left and to be pretty much right underneath, or even just on a, for safety's sake, just a smidge to the left of my upper bumper. So I'm just eyeballing that right now and tightening my screw back up, and I've mentioned as well, and it just did this on me too, that when you tighten the screws on this binder, um, the bumpers tend to move again. They tend to wander back in the direction that you're tightening, so I just moved that out. Okay. okay, so if we look at this from the top, just give you a couple of angles, you see that those two bumpers are pretty much right on top of each other. 
looking at it from the back side because that's also a good indicator. And not necessarily from the arm perspective, but from the little tiny guides down there at the bottom of the arms, you see that they're um, that they're really just right over each other. Okay, so by moving the upper to the right and the lower to the left, um, in theory, I have not changed the width of um, you know the the strip or the the results, right? Because I've I've, I've just pushed it a little bit. So we put this down and um, grab a piece of fabric, a strip that I've cut uh, to push to uh, put in the binder and demonstrate. So um, this is again still the 36 millimeters. And I'm just gonna get that into the binder, making sure I've tucked all the corners in. I see that one liking to poke out. Make sure everything's in. The middle section when I'm pulling it through and this should go through very gently and smoothly okay and when I've got it down here to the back or actually to the front I'm just going to pull the fabric through and then we're going to do as always uh, I want to have a look with you okay just just to check and see because I really think it makes sense if you're adjusting something on your binder to try it you know off the machine on your desk to see if you're getting close to the results that you think you should have now if I'm already looking at it here from the front you see it looks like those two folds on the left hand side are right on top of each other I'm going to flip this over because I love looking at it from the back side. The so back side is just important and if we look at that, uh, even though it's white on white, you can see again here from the back side that the folds are um, really just right on top of each other. And if I slowly pull this through, see that nothing really changes. Those guys stay pretty nice and uh, tight on top of each other. So with that, I think, my, my guess is that I've set up the binder um, accurately enough uh, with the bumpers to want to do a Tesco on my machine. So I'm going to put you guys on hold, I'm going to set up my binder on the machine, I'm going to do some guessing on the positioning, I'll share how I, um, how I guess on that with you guys, and, uh, and we'll give it a whirl. Okay, so I've got my binder uh, attached to the machine now, and actually what I've done is um, I had a look at it and I decided to set it up exactly aligned to my sweet spot. Now I, I like to have a piece of squat shape on my bed and I've marked with a magic marker the, the lower right hand corner of my binder and that's the sweet spot for you know all of the standard two needle binding that I do and I actually really don't have to adjust it much from that position uh, at, at any point. Um, and I decided to, to put it at the sweet spot first and then have a look at the alignment. Now, when I look at it, the I compare my the bumpers and the positioning of my bumpers to the needle ticks on my presser foot, okay? Because the needle ticks are just right aligned up to, to my needles. And I've taken the left needle because I usually, when I'm binding, I use the left and center. Um, so, you know, that's why it's also matching up pretty nicely with my um, my sweet spot marking here. And if I look at it, you're going to want to have your bumpers, so your folds and the results of, of your binding, two millimeters approximately to the left of, of your needle tick. And when I, so, I mean, I just eyeballed this a little bit, and, and it actually looks pretty good. So as always, because I've changed the setup on everything, I'm going to do just a quick test actually with the strip that I originally had so I don't have it wound up on a spool or anything like that. I'm just going to put it through the rake and I'm just going to yank this back through the machine and, um, you know, and let's actually just run, you know, run a couple of stitches into it and, and see what it does. Okay, so I'm going to switch my machine on and uh, do a couple stitches and let's have a look and see where it goes. Okay, so on purpose, of course, I've taken contrasting thread for you guys so that you can um, actually see what I'm doing and, and get 
that's a, a good idea. Now, if I look at this, um, it's really close to the edge. It's extremely close to the edge here, and I'm not going to like that. Um, it's going to be too risky for my project. And if I'm looking at the back side, well, the folds look pretty good, and and um, I think I did a good job on the folds. Uh, it's still, it's just way too close to the edge. So what I'm just going to do right here ad hoc is loosen up my two screws gently, not, not massively, and I'm going to move it over approximately two millimeters to my sweet spot, right? So I just know that I've adjusted it basically by two millimeters to the left of the sweet spot that I have. And I'm just going to continue sewing. So let's see what it does. to look at the results and, and then to make a final call about what we're actually going to do with the, with the setup. So let's have a quick look. As always, lock the stitches and we're taking it out. Let's push the machine back a little bit so I've got some space to talk to you guys. Okay, so here's the beginning section where I said, okay, um, that's way too close, uh, way too close to the edge for comfort, right? Because if you start putting your project in and anything shifts, you could be just right off the edge and, and that's really frustrating, okay? And then about, about here, I stopped and um, moved over from the sweet spot about two millimeters. And you see that that's exactly what happened, right? My needle threads then moved over two millimeters. Now, this could or could not be um, the spot where I want to have it. Okay, so it might be just a just a hair to the left of what I really want to see on my um, on my finished results, but um, you know I think for the first test strip and for the fact that there's not a, a layer of fabric in between, um, I think this is a good setup. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to take another strip, also cut to the same same length and uh, same width actually, and um, I'm going to try it again and I'm going to put another. Uh, a piece of fabric in between so we're looking like we're testing it um, on, a, on a true project. Another thing I want to highlight here is the stretch. Okay, you see a lot of looper thread. You don't see much needle thread. Um, might just be kind of overburdened by the looper thread. Um, but you, you do have stretch and you can see, I'm going to pull it really slowly, the threads you know coming together but you still have your stretch. And another thing to look at here um, and let me just actually just snip this apart because we can see it uh, really nicely. Uh, if we look at the cross section, you see that your two outer folds are just right on top of each other. Okay? And that, that's, that's what you want to have so that you're sure that you're catching the under layer uh, while you're sewing. Okay, so let's put that test piece aside. And um, I've already been to my cutting board. I already did some of my cutting, so I have uh, another test strip, also in white, um, so we can see the contrast. Uh, I'll already wound up on a spool for you guys. So let's pull that all back in uh, and uh, get that threaded through. Now, because I'm not too worried about tensions or anything in, in this demonstration, I'm just going to weave it only through uh, one section of the rake. I've got that strip in there. So I need to clean my binder again. I've got some dust in there. Okay, and we'll just pull it to the back as usual. And I'm going to put my foot down so that I'm holding it set. And actually, I'm just going to give it a second thought. And I'm just going to move my binder just back just a half a smidgen. And make sure that when you're moving it and you're adjusting it, uh, that you're really moving the binder because on this machine on this specific machine if i push i'm actually just going to be moving the door um and that's going to do you absolutely no good okay so we're going to get going i'm going to secure a couple stitches and then we're going to put uh, um, a uh, 
product mock-up sheet, a uh, piece of fabric in between. chicken today and I'm gonna win. So let's get that out of the machine and have a look. Before I started stitching, I did move the um, the binder over, but just another smidgen back to the right, and you see that actually here in the beginning because it just always takes a little bit of time to to line up, right? Um, but for the rest of it, uh, actually, I think the distance that we've got here between the folded edge and, and the stitching is actually a pretty comfortable one. Let's look at the back side, and that's definitely also very comfortable. Right, so you don't have any any risk here of running off the edge with your with your um, needles and and then having this uh, you know flapping up and and not behaving and not looking nice. Okay, so this is um, this is a pretty good result, which I think you know, we can be satisfied with. Just check the stretch. So again, you know this is this is uh, still stretchy, um, so no 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 real worries uh, about that. Yeah, that looks pretty nice. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I think you know, using the uh, single needle on your double fold binding is an interesting option um, to get a slightly different look. Uh, you know, if you just don't you want to have um, you know, too many rows of threads in there, and uh, do keep in mind that you have to use it as a double fold because otherwise you'll have a raw edge and um, that will uh, curl up. And that would be the conclusion. So I hope you enjoyed this. I like the results. And uh, if you need help getting your binder uh, adjusted back to the regular positions, just have a look in my uh, channel at the um, tutorial about setting up and adjusting your double fold binder. I'll also post the link in the uh, info card. Thanks and look forward to seeing you soon in my sewing corner. Have a great day.